suffers heavy damage. About a third of the building has been blown away. The bombing in Oklahoma City was an attack on defenseless citizens. I could hear yelling, screaming. He said, you can't go up there, it's too dangerous. But I just kept saying, our baby's hard now. And I thought, who has come in here and done this terrible thing? FBI hotline. We had all kinds of experts looking for clues. Because at the very first, they had no idea who did it. Then we started getting calls about Middle Easterners, start looking for Middle Easterners. But then someone I spoke to said, do you know what day it is? And immediately it hit me. This is about Waco. Members of the community out there had heard automatic weapons fire and explosions coming from the compound. Pick up the phone, the negotiator wants to speak with you. You went back on your word. That is a lie. When I saw the fire, all I could think about were the children in there. Nine adults came out. Not one of them brought a child out. You're next! Wake up and understand! You're next! They were really imagining this fortress. It's the new thing in America. It's called the militia. No constable's going to come and break their door down. They'll shoot them first. FBI agents surround the cabin. At that point, there was a shootout. When it was all said and done, Sammy and Vicki Weaver were dead. Baby killer! Baby killer! Baby killer! The events at Ruby Ridge lit up the radical right. Call yourself an American? These are Americans! You're a disgrace to the white race! and they decided that they would basically declare war on the U.S. There'll be a lot of blood running one day. It was just a lightning moment of recognition. This was the guy in the sketch. Last night, Timothy McVeigh was charged in the bombing of the Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City. I think everybody felt this sudden sense of betrayal. I think everyone thought, you're one of us. If you continue with like Ruby Ridge and Waco, this is what's gonna happen. Timothy McVeigh, he was the creation of the white supremacist movement. There was a strong connection. All these events, they were all connected. Nobody is going to go and drive a truck downtown Oklahoma City and blow up a bomb. It just doesn't happen. On April 19, 1995, an explosion in downtown Oklahoma City killed 168 people and injured hundreds more. That Wednesday morning became a day the city and the entire country would never forget. I came out and looked, and I saw all of this black smoke and everything, and I ran up here, and when I saw all of the injured children. Hey, Rebecca. We carried these kids out. We held them like they were our, we held them like they were our, our own. As chaos was unfolding downtown, just outside the city, a 27-year-old named Timothy McVeigh was pulled over for driving a vehicle without a license plate. During the stop, the trooper noticed McVeigh had a weapon on him. Okay, Timothy. The trooper stopped him for no tag on his vehicle approximately 10.20 a.m. on Wednesday of this week. After he was stopped, Trooper Hanger noticed that a pistol was showing from a shoulder holster of McVeigh. He then placed him under arrest. His energy is all over this. Speeding up the interstate. This is freaking driver's license. I am at the OKC Memorial site where um, several people lost their lives to the Oklahoma City bombing really sad about this is there were so many children that died here. Um, when I'm dealing with paranormal investigations, it's always hard. Don't get me wrong. But when you have a tragedy like this where so many children died, it, it, 
it hits me a little bit harder. A lot harder, actually. I'm actually feeling very heavy. It is very heavy here, and it's actually kind of hard to breathe. Um, and I don't know what it is about this place, but I can feel the thickness, and I can feel the heaviness and the sadness already, and I just started. <laughs> This is the original uh, front door of the building, or the front gates, I guess you could say. So this is the original building. Let me see if it still has any energy tied to it. Just walking the grounds. Um, 
the area of this building that was hit was pretty large. Uh, and we're standing on the actual grounds where this took place. Hey Rebecca. Is there any spirits here with me that would like to communicate? Talk to me. Someone talk to me. Come on, Calvin. Hey. Let me know you're here. This was very well done. I think this does a great job of visually showing you what a large amount of people died here when you just see numbers on, on a website and you don't really have a foundation of how many people this actually was and so many children. In fact, federal law after this event happened made it illegal to have a daycare in a federal building because of all the children that died here. I'm not really getting many hits off of this on the grounds. I got a lot near that fence where a lot of the personal items were. What is that? What is that? What is that? Doris, you got a dead bird by your spot, sweetie. Are you here?
gonna go in the museum and see if some of the artifacts or the personal items still have energy attached to it. Hey, who's here? Can you talk to me? Hey! 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 How are you doing? Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? What's your name? How old are you? I'm sorry this happened to you. Just know that you're not forgotten. People still think about you, remember you, bring you flowers, leave things on your you bring you flowers, leave things on your you bring you flowers, leave things on your memorial. Tell me how you died. I know, but I want you to tell me. Can you do can you do that for me? Can you do can you do that for me? Those are three separate spirit voices all saying McVeigh. What I captured leading up to the museum was incredible. On April 19, 1995, McVeigh parked a rental truck with homemade explosives outside the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building. At 9.02, he detonated the bomb. The cameras at the Regency Tower apartment building, a few blocks west of the Murrah Building, caught the rider truck parked across the street. Investigators surmise that this is when McVeigh lights the first fuse. A few minutes later, McVeigh moves the truck up and lights the second fuse and parks on the north side of the Murrah building. He then exits the truck and begins walking rapidly to the yellow Mercury parked 
four blocks away. At the Federal Building, the workday is starting. Hundreds of people are already inside. This is the exact camera that caught McVeigh parking the Ryder truck outside the Murrah Building. As I'm filming this inside the museum, I notice in real time a spirit orb fly next to me. Did you catch that? I'm going to slow this down so you can see it. After seeing that, I take my EMF reader out to see if I can detect any energy spikes. It does get up to yellow orange, doesn't hit quite red, but obviously the orb has already left. We move on to the next section of the museum, and this is where they found items belonging to the victims. There were keys, there were shoes, there were coins in the pockets. As I'm getting readings off of my EMF meter, I notice it's hitting yellow orange again, and I notice a spirit orb coming out from the meter to the left, flying off. Little wispy thing. Did you catch that? I really wanted to do a spirit box session in here and, and try to catch some EVPs as well, but the background noise was really loud. There's a lot of people in this section, so I knew that my evidence would be tainted. So I waited till we got to a different section of the museum to break out the spirit box. With the personal items from the victims as well as the news reports, the victims' screams and cries being played over the loudspeaker, you've got to know that this creates this massive energy surge for any spirits that are here. This next section is a rope and a knife used to save a victim. And as you can see to the right, there is another wispy spirit orb that flies off from the meter as it goes to yellow orange. So something is attached to these two items. I'll play it again in slow motion for you to see. Did you catch that?
Now we head to the killer section of the museum where the personal items of the killer reside. Here are the original sketches of the killers. We also have the Dreamland sign and parts of the motel that they stayed at after they were on the run. Next comes the handcuffs that were used to arrest McVeigh, and at this point, my meter is going off like crazy. The shirt that was on his back when he was arrested and the shirt that he was wearing when he detonated the bombs is right next to his handcuffs. I see a little wispy orb fly in front of the t-shirt. See if you can catch that. This is the shirt that McVeigh was wearing when he was arrested. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Now, because it is quiet, I'm starting to catch Class A EVPs on the mic of my camera. This is not coming from the spirit box. See if you can hear the Class A EVP saying he's here. This is the actual getaway car that him and Nichols fled in. It is in this museum. This is also the car that he was arrested in, and he was arrested simply because he had no plates. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Noticing my meter is going on red again, I take out my spirit box to do a spirit box session in this room. However, my spirit box starts to malfunction and completely stops. I stop to change batteries and it still doesn't work. A lot of energy here, huh? I mean, I just, I cannot believe I'm sitting here looking at the weapons that this man carries. He touched the shit. His energy is all over this. That's his freaking driver's license that was in his pocket. To the right of this glass frame, I see something white shoot out to the side. I can't 100% claim that it is paranormal, but as you can see, the meter is going off at the same time. There is no one standing behind me and the visual display that's uh, reflecting in the background is not moving at the time of this light anomaly. You be the judge. The actual materials that he used to make the bomb is here. This is the barrel that he put the liquids in. This American elm tree bore witness to the violence of April 19, 1995, and withstood the full force of the attacks. It stands as a reminder that no matter the evil or hatred we encounter, love and resilience overcomes. What was once an ignored, unassuming urban tree is now an iconic symbol of hope. Hundreds of seeds from the survivor tree are planted annually, and the resulting saplings are distributed each year on the anniversary of the bombing.